Today, I will talk to you and hopefully give you some insight into a problem that everybody seems to have in the music world, uh, perhaps in the art world as well. And it kind of drives me crazy that everyone is just jumping on board with this because it is so antithetical to uh, making progress in your musical career. That truth is that your beats don't suck. There's nothing sucky about any of your beats, no matter what you are latching onto when someone else says this sucks or that sucks. You know, it's like, I think the only reason why a beat or an instrumental would suck is because of the uh, the intention behind it. I think you can't really look at children's art or someone who's an inexperienced artist and say, wow, that painting sucks. And I'm not even talking about like, uh, you're trying to be nice to them and tell them that, oh yeah, it's good when you know that it's not or whatever. I think all that's bullshit. I really do. I think that you had this huge vision, this vivid, amazing, just universe within you of all the music that you intended to create and um, the problem is that up until up until now it's just been uh, difficult to translate that into your DAW because you have to learn all of the different features you have to learn about music in general if you want to make music pertaining to a specific sound or genre. <clears throat> Your adherence to sounding like a particular genre or artist or style or whatever will often be lackluster because, of course, you as a human being are not able to replicate exactly what other people are doing. And I think a lot of times people say, oh, well, that means I suck. That Those beats suck. They, they did not fulfill the purpose that I had set out for them. Um, but essentially, what you did create was something absolutely brand new and absolutely unique. So what I do is I, I, I lean into that. I lean into the lack of ability I have to make something of professional studio quality. Because to me, it just seems like work. It seems like a job. So, something so clinical, so robotic as to make the perfect song. <laughs> I think if, I think we, we probably have made the perfect song throughout the history in that regard, in like a the more clinical and sterile sense. But people don't like it, and if they do, it, it's due to a whole different reason, not because it's just uh, that the achievement of creating this track was uh, difficult in some manner of speaking. I don't look at music like that. I don't look at it as uh, anything more than uh, the ability to elicit emotions, uh, and if you have uh, a certain kind of uh, idea or intention about what you want to have people feel, that's a good start, but really it's up to you. It's what, what do you feel? If you feel anything from your music, that is all that matters because every single person that comes and hears your song are not going to uniformly, uniformly, I don't even know that's real world, but anyways, they are not going to be all feeling the same things that you feel based on a million different fucking things. Uh, what they ate for breakfast, 
you know, what time it is in the day that they listen to it. If their spouse or significant other uh, got into an argument with them. It's a billion different things. So, they're going to feel whatever they feel. And the more you try to coerce people into feeling certain things, uh, that's, you know, that's melodrama. That's the intention, is that you expect them to react a certain way with, like, your intention is to forcibly manipulate others. And that comes across uh, as a bit petty, in my opinion. It's like, what, what are you trying to express? What are you... What do you want to feel with your music? How are you exploring this medium of creativity and emotion and, and, and vision? Uh, your, like I said, your beats don't suck. Given that you only had uh, a certain amount of knowledge in whatever dollar instrument you were working with, uh, it's it's not your fault for not knowing uh, how to execute the incredible, fantastical sound in your head, right? And it's just because it's just difficult. It's just difficult to translate, you know, drawing. So many people out there say that they can't draw. Uh... And I think the reason behind all of this is, and then why people give up, is that it's just social coercion. It's the it's the sense that we have to fit in with other people. So that's why we have the mainstream. That's why it's such a, a popular tug for most people is because uh, they, they want to feel accepted by everyone else around them. So they will... Uh, feel enthusiasm for whatever thing everyone is listening to and uh, yeah that's cool and everything but I think that when you are a fan of music for different reasons not because it's just a way of how to connect with other people and you look at the medium and you think oh no there is something about listening to this introspectively alone that you find pleasure in and yeah it's just it's just it just takes time <clears throat> to uh, help translate that and it, it's difficult it's difficult but not emotionally because the only reason why it would be emotionally difficult is if you expected to immediately be accepted by your peers as uh, as a musician that um, can have that same kind of social camaraderie. Oh, I, I heard that song. It was it was amazing and blah blah blah. Like people are more likely to say it doesn't sound like the mainstream stuff. Therefore, it's not quote-unquote good. I mean, you can tell by the way that most radio stations say we play the best music. It's like they clearly don't know anything about music. If they say it's the best music, they just... It's, it's a different mentality. It's like, no, the music isn't... It's like an accessory. It's like a vicarious way of living through life and uh you know it's fashion they're wearing it they're wearing the music they're not looking at oh how did they create that how did they what instrument was that what effect did they use what was the influence what what was the tempo all of these different things that i am curious about because I, I, I'm a doer. I do things. I create. I don't like watching sports. I like playing sports. Because I just feel that there's something to be enjoyed about doing something. Not 
sitting there and observing it. So I'm not wearing my favorite sports team on me, although I do have a Oakland A's hat. I just like the design. It doesn't matter to me. It's not part of my identity, but you'll have people in the mainstream and music is just <clears throat> it's like your it's like your brand of car. It's like your neighborhood. It's like the clothes you wear. It's like the type of dog you bought. It's all egotistical identity appearance bullshit. And uh yeah, it may elicit emotion in them, but it's not really that's not really the point. The point is to connect with other people. It's like extroversion. It's like party mentality. Um, yeah. The, the, the point is more about the moment that they're having rather than the music itself. Maybe I'm repeating myself, but... <clears throat> Anyways. You're not going to find that your friends, a lot of your friends at least, are going to see what you see in your music if you are not intending to go for the mainstream. You're essentially going at it with the idea that you can create something beautiful or that it is a vessel for partying and uh, being impressive socially, I guess. You're this big DJ with uh, all your equipment and everyone's dancing to your songs like it's yeah that's cool and everything but that's not what that's not the point of it you know i i i saw this video the other day and it was this guy who was a dj and he he just kept on chopping up the song and repeating it and playing weird sounds and switching it up and I just I don't understand that I don't understand how you could ruin a song like that and chop it up and make it just it almost becomes like like a car alarm or something just repeating things like I I came here to listen to music not uh, have you whack off all over the fucking uh, turntable, right? Like, <laughs> come the fuck on. Calm down. I, I don't, it's like, it's meritocracy. It's like, it, it's kind of like that with, like, metal or jazz. People get, it, it, it's a lot of elitism because, oh, well, if you didn't, if you didn't, uh, you know, bleed, if, you, if your limbs didn't fall off, literally, after, you know, three seconds of playing this incredibly technical solo, then you're not even really, uh, like, what are you doing? You're, you're not a musician, you're a caveman, uh, whacking stones, basically. So, you know, like, and it's just, that kind of meritocracy is bullshit. There's so many people in the world of music that, uh, that don't play by society standards of, oh, if you're working as a musician, then the, the only reason why your music would be any good is if you put a lot of effort into it. And, you know, people can get really caught up in that, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do my crazy solo, I'm gonna do my crazy, it's, it's gonna be so super tactical and fucking, look at how good I am at the music. It's like, yeah, that, that's cool and everything, but uh, I, I just don't connect with that. I don't connect with the idea that in order for someone to be relevant, uh, they have to look at it like they're leveling up in Skyrim so that it inevitably they'll become a hundred, level a hundred and everything. Like, to, to me, that's like... It's, it's like Superman. Superman's perfect. It, you know, you can just... Like, if if you say, like, oh, Superman versus this other superhero or supervillain, and you're like, it's a, Superman will always win because you can just come up with some bullshit. You can just come up with some fucking stupid bullshit that says, oh, yeah, you know, he can actually do this. And, uh, yeah, they, 
it's just zero imagination. Like, there is some imagination, but it's pretty lazy. Like, so you're perfect at playing the piano. Like, make something that makes me feel emotion that's not tied to your money or your ability or your opportunity or your uh, drive to just play really fast. Like, okay, you're, you're the, you're the power lifter of pianos. And like, it's kind of like with, uh, certain singers, they're just, it's like they're shredding on metal guitar, but it's their voice. It's like, blah, blah, blah. it's like, oh my God, calm down. Just fucking make music, sing have some intention behind it make a vibe that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for a fucking vibe not uh the greatest uh flute player of all time like i don't know i'm kind of getting off track but you all you have to worry about is persistence. If you want to become a better beat maker, it, whatever that means, you just have to make beats. And then as you go along, it's kind of like writing in a journal. You know, you want to plan your out your life. You want to be able to uh, catalog uh, your thoughts and and guide yourself towards uh, a clearer, more articulate mind. And uh, I know this from a lot of journaling it comes with time and you'll be able to sort your thoughts out and that's kind of what it's like with uh beat making you just you're you're sorting out your thoughts a lot of it is going to be ideas that are amazing but uh they don't they don't come across they come across as avant-garde they don't come across as something that a lot of people will essentially uh, be able to um, understand. Um, but you don't, you have to figure it out. You have to, you have to ask yourself, what do I want from this? Do I want to become uh, popular and liked? And uh, I want, I want money because of that. Or are you making it because you have this vision in your head? You have this, you, you just want to play and create and be imaginative and explore your own process and your own world in your head. Like that's living. It's like living for the destination or living for living. You know, life can be the biggest distraction from living it because life is just this it's a foreign concept you can't just you can't paraphrase it so i think that the more you uh the more you define where you want to go with it the more you as time goes on, you think, okay, so I liked the sound of that instrument, or I liked that tempo, or I liked that vibe, or this or that, right? As you go along and pick up these cool tips and tricks, uh, you'll refine your sound. You'll find a process. It's all about finding a process. You know, it's like you, the best advice I, uh, I could say is like, okay, start with something. Start with, lay out the drums in your track start with that just write write just don't care about the rest of the project just write a cool drum break or a cool drum pattern or something and then after you've finished off that part of the track then work on the next part one thing at a time or i mean if you're comfortable with it just bounce around to wherever inspiration takes you you just go there because it's music. It's not brain surgery. It's not like something that you have to do in a specific way. So, you know, like, it is 
make believe. It's like that's a good analogy. Like when you're an adult, the idea of role play or make believe is so disgusting in your mind. It's like you reserve that for being a kid. You reserve that for something that you want to push out of your mind. It's like, at least I do, I think, if, to be a little bit insecure. I think that pretending is uh, something that, as an adult, a lot of people don't want to do. Make believe, right? Um, and that is what you have to have as a artist, as a musician, is it's make believe. What you're doing is not serious. You're you're trying to adhere it to a occupation or or manual labor. You're you're looking at it as the same way as manual labor. And uh, the more manual labor you do, the bigger your muscles will be, and the the better your music will be. Well, I think that's bullshit. I think that uh, your personality will shine through. Every single extremely successful artist. Uh, had more personality than you could fit into a, a grain silo in Saskatchewan during the winter or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you have to be uncompromising. You have to say to people, no, this is my beat. This is my music. This is my vision. This is my fucking style. Uh, no one is going to tell you it's good or bad, they can go lay an egg. Uh, because right now, w the only reason why your your shitty quote-unquote beats aren't being accepted by the masses is because you have not made enough videos on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever for the algorithm to pick you up and send you out to a whole bunch of people. Most people just love music. They don't even care if it's like perfect or rough around the edges or whatever. Like most people are pretty positive when it comes to art, especially music. When something is in bad faith or like intentionally just trying to make a buck off of, it's, it's like manipulation. It's like if someone is providing a product that has been engineered for you to like it, like some kind of Coca-Cola or something like that. It's like, yeah, I, I like it, but the entire intention behind it was just to steal my money. You know, that's the intention. It's uh, far removed from the actual process of uh, creation. Anyways, getting off track. Uh, Okay, believing in yourself is a long road, but you have to be willing to do that. You have to be able to trust that your bullshit, your, the stuff that you think is lesser than other people's stuff, even in its state now, or state that it was years ago, or whatever, whenever you started, it is not bad it's subjective and you can take that idea and completely flesh it out in the future like you always recycle things and you'll realize as you go along and as you're nicer to yourself that uh like you, you wouldn't tell a kid that's making music making original music and they're just having fun. They're, they're really enjoying themselves and making the stuff that's like... You wouldn't, you wouldn't say, oh, that stuff is uh, rudimentary and it's really terrible. No. You, the point is, is that they are creating something. They're being creative. And that is something that is worth... Uh, it, it's inspiring. And when you think about it, you'll, you'll, you'll think, like, what was this piece of art created with? It was created with love, joy youth, admiration, you know, just wonder, and you'll essentially realize that that's 
exactly how your beats got made. You had the wonder in you, you had the enthusiasm, and you made a beat that doesn't sound like anyone else's, but looking back on it and saying it's a failure is just robbing yourself of the good memories you can have with those songs. You know, it, it's silly. Just because someone else says a music is bad, it, you know, it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't mean anything. Those are the types of people who probably haven't made a song in their life or else they wouldn't understand. Like, it's like someone looking at a fucking NBA game and saying, oh, look at that's easy. All I have to do is put the fucking ball in the hoop. That's all. It's so easy. Anyone could do that. It's like, no, you fucking idiot. It's, it takes so many years to kind of fine tune and hone this that, but no one's going to fucking, you know, go and try to do it themselves. They, they'd rather be right in their mind and think like, oh no, it's easy as fuck. You know, like the hockey players, all you have to do is skate around the rink and fucking put the, put the puck in the, you know, past the, past the goalie into the net. It's, it's easy, right? That's all you have to do. Yeah, it's just, people don't know until they fucking work at it for a long time. And then ignorance is like, oh, yeah, oh, that NBA player sucks, or they're terrible, blah, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> you see, it's just, that it's just ignorance that, um, <laughs> people just have no fucking clue what they're talking about. And they want to remain that way in spite of the evidence so fuck them be you make your shitty music if they if they think it's shitty know that their opinions don't matter really at all the only reason that it would matter is if you're actively coming causing harm with your music it's like yeah that's not that great of a vibe but you know the, the beat itself was nice and everything like that so you no know, you know what i mean anyways i think that Here's a cool concept. It's like, uh, you know how AI has a training set of data that uh, it, it creates, like for the pictures, like Dolly or whatever. Uh, the pictures or the music now with Udio and everything like that. It comes from a wide palette of different um, data, different files. And you got to think about that with the music that you listen to as if you're a writer, you gotta read a lot because all of your uh, writing will uh, be reflective of the stuff that you have read, right? So if you read a whole bunch of Danielle Steele novels, not knocking her, but she sucks, uh, then your writing will probably all be like that, right? So... Uh, yeah, if you only listen to, um, Happy Birthday, right, the song Happy Birthday, your, uh, idea of music is going to be severely lacking, uh, even if it's just Taylor Swift or, uh, Mayhem or Dying Fetus or John Coltrane, like, if you only listen to one particular thing, your music is not going to pull from a giant plethora of, it's just a big old cornucopia of inspiration and skill and beauty. And you gotta try to appreciate things from all different walks of life, all different parts of the world, empathize with it, you know, really feel it. And if you can do that, you're only benefiting yourself. Yeah, anyways carry on with this uh making a plan is good you want to have a fixed destination uh, even if it even if it is like being that uh extroverted kind of dj party guy that you're the you know, if you're looking for fame and fortune like that's cool for the for the sake of fame and fortune but uh yeah you have to have you still have to have a plan as to like where is my music going what type of music do I want to make? What, how can I 
hone this ability? How can I practice until I have exactly my sound that I want? And that, that takes a little bit of planning and guidance and persistence and determination, and then you'll eventually get there. Uh, but yeah, you have to be honest. Don't beat around the bush. If you if you want to make a certain song for a certain reason, if you're trying if you're trying to get into this business for a certain reason, make that very apparent. And if you if you try to hide that or be dishonest about it, that will even speak louder volumes and not in a good way. So, yeah, that's another that's another big old tip for y'all. Uh, you know, I think we all start out with good taste. I think we're all essentially emotional, beautiful, wonderful beings. And that uh, uh, your culture, your connectivity with your family, the, the love that you felt throughout your life um, has the capacity to allow you to create things that will make people feel things. If you don't feel it, no one else is gonna feel it. But uh, yeah, you, you can't think that your beats suck. Because I think to, to end this little rant, um, I just gotta say this, you, you can't half-ass yourself, right? You can't uh, try to be someone else and be yourself at the same time. It's like half-assing yourself, half-assing someone else. Like, you gotta, if you're going to whole ass being someone else, then you're gonna be always lost and people are going to, uh, you're gonna have an identity crisis, basically. And if you whole ass being yourself, you, you just, it's like the wheel of fortune and you land on, um, I don't know, uh, double jeopardy or whatever. So you'll always win if you trust yourself and you say, fuck everyone else. My music is incredible because I made it and I have good taste and I don't need to be validated from, from any motherfucker out there. Once my shit picks up, once it uh, gets to the right ears and I have made very clear my intention about all of this, I have zero doubt that it will go places. Okay, so anyways. Have a most wonderful uh, day or night or evening or twilight if you're like outside wandering around twilight like a zombie or a vampire or whatever. I hope you find exactly what you need to continue and I hope things go smoothly. Bye bye.